the contemporary church faces some of the same issues addressed by the early church. People have always been fascinated with the excitement or the emotion. And I'm sure you'll agree with me on that. That's what has fascinated people. But for Paul, the, the focus was never the gifts themselves. In fact, when the gifts drew attention to themselves, Paul quickly rebuked the people who emphasized them. He understood the gifts were meant to function for a purpose in the church, for helping people in their walk with the Lord and for pointing people to Jesus. Spiritual gifts are to glorify God and no one else. The reason Paul was so concerned about the fruit of the Spirit can be seen when we examine his descriptions of spiritual fruit in his various letters. The fruit of the Spirit is really another way of talking about the character of Christ. The fruit is the result of the Spirit at work in someone's heart. The goal of the Spirit is to make people more like Jesus. Yes. So the fruit of the Spirit has to be Christ-likeness. Paul was very concerned that people live their lives in ways that reflect Christ. His in Christ language points to his concern with believers' connectedness with Jesus. And that's what that I want to emphasize today in this lesson. Why it's so important that we produce fruit yes, amen. In, in our Christian life, in our Christian walk. <clears throat> For the past two Sundays... <clears throat> We've studied about the Holy Spirit dwelling in our lives. And we should know that the Holy Spirit is the engine that drives the Christian life. Yes. It is. It's the engine that drives the Christian life. The Holy Spirit is instrumental in the initial phases of the Christian existence. He's the beginning. He's the one that gets it going. However... There are further experiences to be had with the Holy Spirit than that which occurs at the time of conversion. Now, we studied that a couple of Sundays ago. And last Sunday, we took a closer look at the ongoing experience of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we grow in the Spirit, then He empowers us with the ability to overcome the attacks of Satan. Without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are not empowered. And Satan will overcome us. It's hard enough when we have the Spirit, isn't it? But uh, without the Spirit of God uh, controlling our lives, and it, it's we're just not going to, well, the Spirit, or the Scripture says we'll fail. But the fruit of the Spirit is the evidence, as I said before, of a spirit-filled person. This is something we look for. We look at, you know, like I said uh, last Sunday, that when we see someone that that uh, we know uh, somewhat about their lives, I guess, and you see them acting somewhat different than what, you know, they're supposed to be, that, that gives you an idea that of how they're living their life. And they're not living, their fruits are not barren right. the way that they should. So today we're going to take an even closer look at the specific fruit of the Spirit that we read about in Galatians 5 and they're listed on the board. And we'll see that the fruits are not just random characteristics that uh, Paul encourages in the Scripture, but we're going to see that they are characteristics of Jesus. Christians must bear these fruits because the entire goal of the Christian experience is to become more like Him. Isn't that our goal in life? Is to be more like Jesus. Should be. He is our example. He's the example that, that we want to follow. And I know there is there is a lot of uh, uh, people in, in, in our Christian life today that encourages us that we are encouraged by, by the way they live their life, maybe, or the way they, they talk to us. But we don't 
want to get caught up to where we want to be like them. It's good to have friends that is Christians, but we want to be more like Jesus. Our goals need to be set higher. If our goals are set on we want to be like so-and-so, our goals is not set very high. Right. We need to set them at the highest that it can be and be more like Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, he said, he said, you can tell if someone truly belongs to him by the kind of spiritual fruit that they produce. Same way today. We can pretty much tell where a person stands sometimes by the fruits they bear. Yes, amen. Uh, I've seen I've seen people that is very religious when it comes to their at church. And if you never saw that person out anywhere, you'd never know the difference. But then I've seen them other places, and the fruits are just not exactly like they were. You know, the fruits is not wasn't barren the way they were supposed to. So this is what the lesson is all about. This is summing all of this up for us to realize what the Holy Spirit is and what it is for. And I hope we've learned that this quarter. I, I hope that we have a, a higher view of what the Holy Spirit is. It's not just one thing and that's it. It's, it's a variety of, uh, he leads us in a variety of directions and, and leads us that way. So there are two huge things that the fruits of the Spirit accomplish here on this earth. Number one is they give you the power to fulfill your destiny in Christ. How many has, how many, your destiny is in Christ? Your destiny is eternal life. Your destiny is a home beyond this one. Uh, so that's what the fruit of the Spirit will uh, enable you or it will prepare you for this. They give you the power to, feel, to fulfill your destiny in Christ. Because without the Holy Spirit bearing spiritual fruits inside you, you would be powerless. You wouldn't have the endurance and the faithfulness to complete the calling that God has given to you. You wouldn't even have the self-discipline to study your Bible or to pray. Without the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts that God has hidden inside you, you know, those fruits are there, they're hidden inside you, without the, the Spirit guiding you, then they would stay hidden. They'd be locked away forever. But with the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you, then those fruits become alive, but it's up to us how they grow, how they produce. See, I can't produce fruit for you, and you can't for me. That's one thing you have to do for yourself. We can, as teachers or, or ministers, give you encouragement. But as far as doing it, you have to do it. So number two is, they are what God uses to draw the people to himself through you. You are a uh, billboard, a walking billboard for Christ. And what people sees in you and how you handle things, they want that. This world is so much in turmoil that Amen. when somebody sees a spirit-filled person that's kind and loving and gentle and all of these things that it's talking about here today, they want that. Yes, Everybody amen. wants that in yes, their lives. Amen. 